The entire world of Minecraft is made up by something called ticks. Everything that has automation in the game is ran by ticks. That means all of the plants and trees that are growing, all of the redstone that is operating, and even things like liquids like lava and water and how fast it spreads across blocks. There is 20 game ticks in every single second, and that means that there's about 24,000 game ticks in every single Minecraft day, which comes out to 20 minutes, 10 minutes for the day, 10 minutes for the night. However, there can be slight variations due to computer hardware and lags or internet connection. But generally, you can expect 20 ticks per second pretty much all of the time. Now, there is also a different type of tick, and I don't want you to get it confused. There's something called a random tick. This random tick is what controls the growth of randomized stuff, kind of like the trees growing, plants growing, mobs spawning, and things of that nature. The random ticks are going to take place inside of the exact same chunks as all of the regular ticks. But instead of ticking every single chunk 20 times per second, it works a little bit differently. Generally, all of the chunks around the player are going to be loaded by something called simulation distance. We're going to get into that here shortly. However, within that simulation distance, all of the chunks around it are going to have the ticking taking place. And with the regular tick, that includes from the sky all the way down to bedrock. However, the way that the random tick works is it's going to go by sub chunks. Instead of ticking chunk columns, which are going to be from the sky all the way down to bedrock, it's going to tick each chunk individually, which is a 16 by 16 by 16 area. All subchunks are going to be this size, and that's what makes up the entire world of Minecraft. So starting at the bedrock level, it's going to select one block inside of that entire subchunk to tick. After it has completed this tick, then it's going to go up to the subchunk above that one, and then it's going to repeat this process until it reaches build height. This is how the game is programmed to grow certain things randomly. So for example, we can look at pointed drip zone on the Minecraft wiki. If we scroll down and find the growth speed, we're going to find a percentage that is 1.138% of a chance for the dripstone to grow every single game tick that it receives. And with that high of a percentage, which doesn't really seem that high, if you figure out how many blocks are inside of a 16 by 16 by 16 area, you can see that 1.138 is kind of a high percent for that block to be ticked. And that's exactly why the dripstone takes so long to grow. You might be wondering what all that has to do with redstone. Well, in order to diagnose redstone properly, you have to understand how redstone works. And that is the basis of ticks and random ticks inside of Minecraft Bedrock. Now for redstone, we're mainly going to be focusing on the regular tick speed and not the random tick speed. However, if you get into farms and stuff, it's good to know random tick speed and how it works. That way you can make the farm around it. Hopefully I explained that clearly and it makes sense because, well, it's going to get a little bit more complicated because there is actually a third tick that we need to talk about. And that is going to be the redstone tick. A redstone tick is made up of two game ticks. Which means if there's 20 game ticks inside of a single second, that means that there's going to be only 10 redstone ticks inside of a single second. You might be familiar with these if you ever saw any type of content creator build any kind of redstone circuit. These in front of us are called repeaters, and just like before, you can use these to extend the redstone circuit past 15, but they do also come with a trade-off, and that is that they're going to add some sort of delay to the circuit. Now lucky for us, this delay is adjustable, and we can use this adjustment to manipulate the circuit in order to make it do what we want it to. So over here to the left we have just redstone dust going into here and that's going to soft power that block which is then going to power the piston. Because it does not have a repeater on it it's going to receive an instant signal input so whenever we hit that it's going to extend that piston. However because we have a repeater on this one here this repeater by default is going to give us a one redstone tick delay which is going to be equivalent to two game ticks. It might be very difficult to see because this is a very small increment but if we hit this button there is a ever so slight delay. If we go over here, this is set to the next level on the repeater and it is set to two redstone ticks, which is going to be equivalent to four game ticks. If we hit this button, you might be able to see, however, as mentioned, it's going to be super fast, but ever so slower than the other one. Then we can move on to this one, which is going to be set to the third level on the repeater, which is going to be set to three redstone ticks, which is going to be the equivalent of six game ticks of a delay. Again, it's going to be hard to notice, but I'll hit this and it's going to be ever so slightly longer of a delay. And now moving over to the max setting of this repeater. This is going to be set on a 4 redstone tick delay, which is the equivalent of 8 game ticks. This is going to be set on a 4 redstone tick delay, which is the equivalent of 8 game ticks, which is getting really close to a half a second of delay. So you should be able to see the delay on this one whenever I hit this button. So to give you a visual idea, we can demonstrate the differences between combining these redstone ticks together. As before, we have this one here, which is going to be a 0 tick because there is no delay there. Then we have this one here, which is a one redstone tick, which is equivalent of two game ticks. So these you add together, you would have one redstone tick and one redstone tick, giving you a max delay of two redstone ticks, which would be the equivalent of this one over here that you have set to a number two setting. If we hit this one, we have a slightly longer delay. Then over here, we have a four redstone tick delay, 
we have this one here, which is set on a two redstone tick delay, and this one here that is set on a two redstone tick delay, giving it a combined redstone tick delay of four. So if we hit that, then you can see there is a four redstone tick delay, and that again is going to be the equivalent of this one over here. I think you got the gist of it. You can take your redstone ticks and multiply them by two, and that will give you your regular tick count. Or you could take your regular tick count and divide that by two and figure out your redstone ticks. This one over here, you guessed it, we have three redstone ticks and three redstone ticks for a combined total of six redstone ticks, which would be the equivalent of 12 game ticks. So we can push this button and see this one in action. And as you can see, we have a slightly longer delay. And then this one over here, we're going to have four redstone ticks and four redstone ticks for a combined total of eight redstone ticks. And as you can see, this one is going to be even longer. However, keep in mind, none of these have to be even, and you can figure out your delay based on these settings. So if you wanted a total of five redstone ticks, you would adjust this one back to one, and then you have four plus one is going to equal five. Same thing here, if you wanted a seven redstone tick delay, you would have this one here on four, and this one here on three, which would give you a grand total of seven. Hopefully you're still with me and I have not lost you while explaining all of that. I know all of this can be very confusing, especially if you're just starting out on redstone. Don't feel like you have to memorize all of this immediately. Keep in mind that you can always bookmark these videos and then come back to them as a reference as needed. Or as mentioned previously inside of the video, the wiki is going to include all of the information that you would need. One last thing that I want to note while we're on this topic, whenever we are setting a delay, it is just that. It is a delay. That is marking how long it's going to take before the redstone is activated on the opposite end of that delay. This is not going to mark how long the repeaters stay activated and powered. However, typically the longer delay that you have, the longer they'll stay powered. And if we go in the back here, you can see just how important a redstone delay is. If we hit this button, you can see all of these are going to go off at the exact same time. However, on the left hand side, we have quite the delay going into these. So if we hit the button now, you can see that there's a big difference between all of these going off. And these delays are going to be critical, especially if you want to have very precise control over a circuit. Something as simple as making a song with a bunch of note blocks, you're going to need to have specific amounts of delay. That way it can have the timing correct throughout the notes. The repeaters are solely used for a demonstration of the tick delay. Now I am going to be going over the repeaters and all of their functions on a separate lesson. But for now we're just going to get the basis of the redstone ticking delays. Bear in mind that you can use repeaters together in order to extend the delay even further. So from the left to the right we have a redstone 4 tick delay, a redstone 4 tick delay in the center, and a redstone 2 tick delay on the right. All of these repeaters together are going to make a 10 redstone tick delay, which is the equivalent of 20 game ticks or one second. And we can figure that out by some simple math because we have four plus four plus two equals 10. In order to demonstrate that, we can hit this button and as you can see, we have one second delay. Keep in mind, all of these delays are going to be a fixed delay and they're not going to include any kind of lag that might affect the circuit. One thing that you need to be very vigilant of is the delay that can happen going across chunk borders. For this example, we're going to pretend that this line here in the middle is going to be our chunk border. As you can see, we have repeaters and redstone dust going across them. Due to the variance of each of these two chunks ticking at different rates, depending on when this one ticks versus when this one ticks can create a delay. Now because these are ticking all behind the scenes very, very quickly, the delay might not always be something that is noticeable. However, it can and most of the time will affect redstone going across the chunk borders. And this is the exact reason why most good redstoners will bring up chunk borders and mention that you should always chunk align your redstone builds, specifically if they have any kind of intricate timings that cannot be variated much. Most of the time, if your redstone circuit is not timing sensitive, then it's really not going to be affected by chunk borders that much. Now, just because we have about 20 ticks per second does not mean that the ticking system is perfect. Although it is very, very reliable, it can still be subject to hiccups here and there, specifically from lag and internet connection. To show you this, I have a piston connected to this observer clock here. And by unpowering this piston, I'm going to turn it on and you'll be able to see that this is not exactly perfect. You can see that the piston rises and lowers. However, it is not a perfect pattern and sometimes it'll delay a little further before it extends again and other times it might extend a little faster. And this is one of the things that makes the observer clock so unreliable, which is why I typically don't use it a whole lot unless it's kind of a dummy circuit that doesn't really care about timing. To further illustrate this point, we have a wooden button here and this wooden button is going to stay active as soon as I press it for 15 redstone ticks. This is the equivalent of 30 game ticks. The buttons do not tend to have any kind of variation inside of the redstone ticks and tend to be very exact on the amount of time that they stay activated. As soon as I hit this button, it's going to extend the sticky piston, which is going to push this observer forward. And as soon as it goes forward, it's going to turn into an observer clock, which is going to allow this observer to have an update because this observer just came in front of it and changed the state of this air block. 
And then as soon as this one updates, it's going to update this one because the state of this observer block has updated, causing this one to update. I hope that's not confusing. In layman's terms, we're going to have the exact same thing happening as it is over there. But instead of powering a piston, this time we are powering a dropper. With this dropper, we have 64 oak planks inside of it. And we can measure how many items are dispensed over the course of that entire 15 redstone tick duration. So we'll start off by giving that a press. And you can see that it is dispensing items. Looking inside of that dropper, we have 57 items. And then we can pick up the remaining 7 items here. However, if I do that test again and put those back, we can hit this button again. And this time we have 58 inside of the dropper, which means that we should have 6 on the floor. Which is exactly what I've picked up. So as you can see, this is anywhere close from being reliable. On Java Edition, they tend to be much, much more reliable. But that has to do with how the game and observers are programmed to operate. The very last thing that I want to touch base on is going to be over here inside of your menu whenever you access it from outside of the game, and that's going to be simulation distance. This also has a setting to set this before you even create the world. The simulation distance is how far away from the player everything is active inside of the world. So for example, if it's set to 4 chunks, which is going to be the most common, then it's going to load everything that is 4 chunks away inside of a taxicab distance from the player. This setting will range from 4 chunks all the way up to 12 chunks. So for example, if you are on a simulation distance of 4 chunks, and since each chunk is a 16 by 16 area, then you are effectively going to have 64 blocks away from the player loaded. However, keeping in mind that you cannot partially load chunks. So even if you are standing inside of a position where the 64th block is the first block on a chunk that you are now starting to load, it is going to load that entire chunk because chunks cannot partially be loaded. To figure out how many blocks away from the player that the loading stops, all you need to do is take 16 and multiply it by the amount of chunks that you have selected. So for example, if we take 16, which is the distance of the chunk all the way across, and we times that by 6, we're going to get a total of 96 blocks away from the player. If you are on a world that is a simulation distance of 4, which most are, it's going to be the most common, and I think that's primarily because that's what the Microsoft Realm is locked to, so if you're on Realms, it's always going to be locked to a simulation distance of 4. If you want to see a real world trick that I use quite commonly on Realms and servers and regular worlds, because I'm always playing on simulation distance 4, what you can do is grab you some redstone dust, a redstone block, a sticky piston, a solid block that can conduct redstone, and if you have a spyglass that helps also. First thing that you want to do is place down your sticky piston, and then a solid block next to it, a piece of redstone dust on top of that solid block, and then a redstone block on top of that sticky piston that's going to make a clock that's going to go up and down. Now if we go all the way back here, you'll be able to see that the arm of that piston is going to start to unrender, however everything else is going to stay working. And as you can see, the arm just unrendered. Why this happens, I don't know. It's probably a bug. Big surprise, a bug inside of bedrock. However, that's kind of irrelevant. What I want to focus on is that redstone block going up and down. If you continue to go back, you'll eventually get to a point to where that redstone block is going to stop right before it disappears. So now that that redstone block has effectively stopped, that means that that chunk is no longer loaded and nothing is going to be ticking inside of that chunk because that's the end of the simulation distance. However, if we inch forward until we see that thing starting to go, we can take note of the block that we're on. And since we just entered this one, if we go into this block here, this is probably the chunk border. Yes, yeah, so you can see that the chunk border is here and here. So as you can see, if I go forward ever so slightly, that's going to start going back up. And that's because I'm now officially inside of this chunk here, which is loading that chunk. And we can use this chunk border pack to go ahead and verify what I just told you. So we can select our chunk borders, and as you can see, we have that chunk border going right down these two blocks, which is the trigger point for our simulation distance to load that piston. Well guys, that's going to wrap up lesson number three on this How to Teach You Redstone series. I really hope that you enjoyed this video, and hopefully you learned something new. If you found any value inside of this video, then please consider dropping a like, as it really does help out the channel and it helps new people find my content. If you plan to complete the series and you're interested in learning how to build anywhere from very simple farms in redstone all the way up to top tier crazy redstone farms and contraptions, then consider subscribing. With well over 100 videos on my channel, I have a ton to offer you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for another lesson. Bye.